Guys, hold on tight because some crazy ass shit is going on right now in the AI world. If you were already sweating your pants because of the pace of growth of ChatGPT, Midjourney, and so on, well, let me tell you that what's about to come is several orders of magnitude crazier. And it's coming in the next few weeks, or next week, or tomorrow, I don't know. Long story short, it will soon be possible to create and run models like ChatGPT on your phone or PC locally and virtually anyone will be able to create such a model. Yep, you heard it right. In this report, ARK Invest estimated that today it costs about $450,000 to train a model like ChatGPT3, but that this cost will eventually drop to just $30 in 2030. That already seemed like an aggressive prediction, except that it wasn't. Researchers from Stanford pretty much did it for $600 already now. And the craziest part is how they did it. They used the existing ChatGPT API that anyone can get access to to train their own model. For that, they used the open source meta model, which has 7 billion parameters, and then ran it through ChatGPT3 to improve it, teach it to react the way it reacts. In other words, they used one artificial intelligence to train another artificial intelligence. They called the model Alpaca. Why Alpaca? Well, the 7 billion parameter Facebook model that it's based on is called Large Language Model Meta AI, aka LAMA. And LAMAs and alpacas are closely related. Get it? LAMA, alpaca? Anyway, the result was pretty incredible, because as they say, alpaca behaves similarly to OpenAI's Text Da Vinci 3, which is ChatGPT3, while being surprisingly small and easy, cheap to reproduce. Basically, they arrived at 90% of the performance of ChatGPT3. Now consider this. Meta's 7 billion parameter is the smallest of their open source models. It was one of the first tests of such a method. It only cost them $600 to accomplish and it can run locally. Now let's try to unpack all the potential implications of this. And as you'll see, it gets real crazy real fast. First of all, it potentially disrupts OpenAI and ChatGPT itself because it's now technically possible to easily create a model that mimics it, as long as you can access ChatGPT's API to train it once. As Eliezer Yudkowsky puts it, if you allow any sufficiently wide-ranging access to your AI model, even by paid API, you're giving away your business crown jewels to competitors that can then nearly clone your model without all the hard work you did to build up your own fine-tuning dataset. If you wonder about the legality of this approach, well, obviously OpenAI expected this, and it's clearly forbidden to do so in their terms of service. If anyone launches such a model commercially, they will most likely lose the lawsuit. However, there's absolutely nothing that will prevent such models from being used illegally by literally anyone. As Eliezer puts it, if you successfully enforce a restriction against commercializing an imitation trained on your input's outputs, that means that competing checkpoints go up on BitTorrent. And unlike ChatGPT, those models won't have to be limited for bias, hate speech, fake news or whatnot, because they won't be controlled by a central entity. It means that any malicious actor that is located outside of a normal, stable jurisdiction, or even simply an enemy government, will be able to replicate and use the power of these models for themselves as they want. Picture how today a huge chunk of our society is unable to even discern fake news from actual news and the consequences that come with it. Now imagine that the number and quality of such fake news and images will grow exponentially. What will happen then? If we can't educate people not to fall for the typical fake news BS, how will we cope when this BS is powered by AI? Technically, however, solutions exist. First of all, OpenAI can simply close the access to its API and never allow it to anyone again. But that's obviously not happening. So for illegal commercial purposes, they will have to sue anyone using such a model in jurisdictions where it will be possible. And when it comes to external threats, well, here either the host governments will pressure and police the rest of the world into tracking and shutting down actors located within them who use this technology for malicious purposes, or we will simply end up with geofenced internet like China does. Except that instead of closing our individual country's internet borders, we will maybe create a single internet zone composed of countries that follow the rules and 
honestly crack down on illegal AI models. Other than that, given that such low-cost models can run on local devices, as pointed out by Artyom Andrienko, it also means that technically we could all have our cheap AI assistants embedded pretty much everywhere. And maybe instead of forbidding it, OpenAI will rather decide to monetize such use cases as well. In any case, Stanford just opened a can of worms. It's just a question of days before someone else creates another cheap but much more powerful model and so on. It's now a race against time before companies such as OpenAI or Google figure out how to move forward with it. And the pace of AI development has shown us that time in the AI world is too short to adapt to. In any case, uh, this breakthrough can't go unanswered, given the stakes for the companies who put billions of dollars on the table to develop the most powerful models in the first place. Let me know what you think about it and generally how do you feel about the speed at which artificial intelligence is expanding. Let me know in the comments and if you liked this video, do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.